Yes, the growing up, obviously living in Dalton, um, it was a town that had its own shops, its own rotary clubs, mm. you know, it had uh, everything within that one town. You didn't need really to, to go into like Barrow, the main town, um, and because um, I grew up in shops, you know, we, mother and Ted owned a shop, so, you know, I was right in the middle of town, um, and then as a kid, it would have been, a lot of it was fishing, you know, because we have a lot of old mines around here, we'd go fishing, you know, in the ponds up Mausel. Um, so that was a, a lot of the time and it was push bikes and hanging around Dalton. There wasn't a massive amount to do, um, but one of the benefits of around here was that we could get jobs with the farms, hay timing, potato picking, stuff like that, which still goes on. Uh, it's more mechanised now than probably what it was, um, but we got paid for it, you know, as well as having... Uh, you know, a milk round. I didn't have a milk round, but you could get milk round jobs. You could get. I got a paper round, and you know that that's basically where we were uh, growing up. Um, well, school obviously played a major part, and you know the big thing at school. Um, it was coming out of like the horrible disco era so when punk came about that was what I got into um, and you know it sounds weird saying it now but it was school discos then that we went to you know um, and you could go there and there would be the mixture of punks uh, heavy rockers um, you would get the occasional mod that wasn't big around here mm. um, but everybody knew everybody there was no rivalry as such you know Mickey taking yes but not any aggro but as you grew older then it became more where you would be going into pubs and clubs and that's where you kind of grew up and out of it um, and then you were going into like late 80s so music had changed again um, but yeah the the punks and the heavies really were the strongest um, and then that's daft as it sounds from a punk that's when I got into motorbikes but when you've got an older brother who's a heavy rocker and all his mates have motorbikes and your garage where you live is where they all come and fix them then you're obviously going to get into that yeah. so that's basically um, how I grew up and a lot of my friends grew up because they would come round because the older heavy rockers were there um, but at the same time as a punk I could go into a pub that was full of heavy rockers because of my brother and his friends some people couldn't it was a form of transport because you weren't as you got older and you got old enough to ride motorbikes you would um, use it to get out of the, 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 the town really because the small Barrow is a big town but it's very much like a village everybody knows everybody and Dalton is just outside then you had the little villages um, and then Ulverston and it was just a way of whizzing round. It was, it was just a me mechanised push bike. As a kid, you used push bikes to whiz around. 16, 17, you got a moped, and then you just got a bigger bike. Um, some people got cars, um, but a bike is is more of a group of people, and different friendships formed because of that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was a lot to do with. Um, where you worked so it was transport to and from work uh, it was because of your work colleagues they were in, living in different towns mm. so you were whizzing to see them 
and dare I say it, girls. <laughs> <laughs> it was a way to get to go and see girls. <laughs> Everybody loves a biker. <laughs> its influence well when I left school you were just expected to go into the yard that was it you know they took that many people on you know it was an absolutely huge employer um, I didn't get a job in the yard and it really was hitting a brick wall well, what do I do now um, I was very lucky because I got another job which kept me going for the first four years of employment um, but the yard was a massive influence um, and trades were a massive influence. Mm -hmm. um, everybody had a skill, you know, it was, that's the way it worked. And people who got the apprenticeships, um, after they'd finished the apprenticeship, they would go on to be contractors and they would go on to set up their own businesses. A lot of the people, my generation now are business owners and employers. Mm. So it really was a good start in life um, and for those that wanted to leave the town it was a fantastic trade to have. Um, it was a proper trade from start to finish mm. uh, whereas now a lot of trades go through colleges for the first year and you know they are different and um, you can gain qualifications easier and then it's after that you've got to have experience whereas you could walk out after an apprenticeship in the yard fully trained so that's a different thing to what it is now mm. um, then Ulverston had Glaxo which again was a big employer and they had trades in there but they also had process work for those that didn't get trades uh, as I say, I was very lucky. I got in with an electronics company and that took me around the country. Um, I enjoyed going, you know, Brighton, London, Birmingham, putting up exhibitions mm. um, and setting those up and having a fantastic time because at the time, because Barrow and Furness is a peninsula, um, you were limited to actually getting out of the area. Yes, you could travel on the bus to Kendall and you know possibly Carlisle but you didn't really think much more than that if anything it was just going to see concerts That's you know like you would go things. to Lancaster or Manchester to concerts mm. whereas as I say I was fortunate in the job I started getting um, to go to London and places um, and yeah getting seen a lot more I think there's a lot more travel now um, but without being negative about Barrow um, it is at the end of a peninsula as a comedian once said it's a 40 mile cul-de-sac you know one road in one road out so we haven't got the 360 degrees that other major towns have where you can go north, east, south and west to different places here you head out so a lot of people know you know travels a lot more available more people have cars you know mm. the package holidays have got people out and about and you know like young people go on holidays abroad together more now you know like Malaga and places like that but it's getting them out you know and they, they think nothing of going out whereas I think um, a lot of people because of the lack of employment and a lack of money to a certain area or areas in Barrow people then some people very rarely leave Barrow um, little things that stick in my mind is I worked in Ulverston um, and it was when I'd got into the uh, plumbers merchants trade as sales and pe because we advertised a lot you would get phone calls um, because it wasn't like just Google where you are they had to phone you and say where are you and you'd give them directions such as you turn right at the auction market in Ulverston and they'd say where's that you know yeah. because people just didn't 
they didn't need to leave Barrow, so <laughs> they didn't know certain parts of Ulverston, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, that's narrowing it down quite a bit. No, but because if people yeah. want to get out, they get out. Mm. Um, you know, going back to what we were saying before, it's one of the reasons why having a motorbike, you got out and around the lanes and different places and different people's houses on a motorbike, and I'm sure people are still doing it. You know, you've got your scooter boys in Barrow. Do they leave Barrow? They might do, but the more than likely, it more than likely, the chances are they will just whiz around the Barrow streets. Hollywood Park. <laughs> and if they get a car, they park up in Hollywood Park. Yeah. Oh, what about this is where I'm going. That kind of I don't know. There's like a really yeah I think like it's more so just that culture now well. because when you're younger you go out and you see things in a different light it's mm. exciting everything's new big buildings big roads traffic you know like masses mm. of traffic um, so now you know personally when I go anywhere when I get to junction 36 of the M6 I like turning left because I like going to Scotland I like the quietness if I turn right and you start going to Manchester and places like that um, yes you do it there's lots to do there it's good to go to concerts it's good to go to things stay in hotels etc but it is nice to come back to a more peaceful area um, you've got as you say we're on a peninsula so we've got sea on three sides you know, which is stunning scenery. You've got mm. seals, you've got wildlife, and on the other side, you've got the Lake District Mountains. So, we are very blessed in the fact that we are 20 minutes away from the Lake District. We can go for walks. You know, people pay a fortune to come two hours up the motorway to stay in a hotel in the Lake District, you know, and try and get away from it all. We've got that 12 months of the year. We can go there when it's quiet in winter we can have the winter walks just on our doorstep mm -hmm. the autumn walks we can just say oh it's a lovely day let's go and you're in the Lake District uh, locally yeah, growing up we had the meadows you don't see them so much now but I remember the meadows around here um, but there's also the side in me you know this isn't just anybody from around here but I know it through friends I was lucky Again, I joined the TA when I was 21, and that got me out into places, and I was on training areas. In training areas, I was camping out in little shell scrapes. I had, you know, the basic stuff to camp out in, so camping has always been, and this area here is stunning for camping. You can just go to the shore and camp on the shore. You know, it's it doesn't have to be structured. That's the thing around here, is it doesn't have to be structured from a city you have to leave it you can't just chuck a tent and within you know you can't chuck a tent on a push bike and go somewhere from a city whereas here you can chuck a tent on a push bike and ride to the coast and stay overnight so yes you've got lots of open spaces to enjoy and now it's nice to go um, away we've got a camper van and we go to all different places but it is nice to come back yeah, but it also yeah. dictates where we go as well because yeah. we like going to the coast somewhere else we <laughs> yeah. like going to Scotland where there's bigger mountains yeah. Less in the well if you if people still know people around here so you can get jobs because you know people um, there's a lot of community still around here um, people can still rely on people around here whereas I can only surmise that you know in cities where people you know there's still a community but it's a small community and it's just there you go outside that community and this is only from the news that they're in the wrong area then there can be trouble so you're, you're more restricted in that sense whereas around here you know, whether you go to the far end of Barrow, the docks, or you go up to Ulverston or surrounding villages, you can talk to somebody. And my job is I get out and about on the road talking to builders and plumbers. Everybody does know everybody. Whether they're from Ulverston, they know, you know, what's happening in Barrow. So there's that side of it. Um, 
so yeah it's, it's difficult to put into I don't know cities enough That side of it. Yeah, like, um, well, just like this area is suffering the same as all areas that pubs are shutting down uh, regular. You know, Dalton, you know, used to have, I think, um, the most pubs per head of population. Um, so, whereas now, you know, you're lucky you, you couldn't have a pub crawl in Dalton, you know, there's like three main pubs. You know, and there's only about six in total now up the up the straight up the main street, um, but yeah, people still go there, and you you know there's still pool teams, there's still darts teams, that's still a strong thing, uh, and yeah, people sit and talk, um, and yes, they will go into Barrow into Ulverston. Um, Ulverston has a very strong community spirit, you know, it's massively strong in Ulverston. You know, it's very not old fashioned, but it still has a very strong community spirit. Mm. But Ulverston encourages it through events in the town, festivals. Mm. Whereas, you know, in Barrow they still have events and festivals, but it's only for there will be only a smaller percentage of the population that would go to it. Whereas in Ulverston it would be a high percentage of the population go to it. Yeah. I, I guess the best. Hard to like I guess the it. best thing about this growing up in this area is it just used to be wild because it did. Um, pubs you were drinking till you were only supposed to drink until half ten, eleven, what it whatever it was. But even the police knew which pubs you were in until twelve, one, two, three sometimes. You know, and sometimes the police would come and join us, you know, for a quick one. So, and people would, um, the farm community, you would be, people would be driving around, you know, like, as I say, from hay timing from far to farm to farm, and no health and safety as such. People had pickups and tractors and trailers, and we'd be hanging off the back of them. You know, you'd have an old pickup with about 15 of us tucked in the back and stick your know, head sticking out of windows. You know, one time we even came back, we used to go swimming in one of the ponds, and um, we all jumped in my mate's car, and he literally had the boot up, and there was people sat in the boot. You know, and we travelled miles like that. You know, and now you'd be cast out you know, health and safety, police, you know, be on the national news if you got caught doing something like that, but we were just wild, you know. Um, no, not wild, just daft. We were young. So, yeah, so, you know, whizzing around on motorbikes that weren't taxed and insured and no helmets uh, because we were rural, you know, that, at that point we were living in Lindell, which, again, um, a small village so there was no police as such and you know but there was no major crime we weren't criminals we were just getting away with it kids nowadays are obviously whizzing up and down on motorbikes with no helmets pulling wheelies and that's on the national news that was us being teenagers in the, the village so we've all done it <laughs> I think anybody who drops out of the system is going to suffer, wherever you are. Um, I think one, yes, Barrow is classed as a deprived area, um, it's classed as a very working class area, but sometimes that's a strength because it keeps communities together. Um, the actual drug side of things, I wouldn't know properly, but from what I do know about Barrow with certain things is that because it's a peninsula, because it's one town and everybody knows everybody, drug problems can be dealt with. We've got one road in, one road out, they know where the drugs are coming in, where um, they know who's taking them, they know the areas that it's strong, so they're quite well policed. 
um, you know, there's not as much knife crime as a city, there's very little gun crime. Again, only what I hear, I work in a builder's merchants which has its own community so there's a lot of young lads who are your know, labourers etc and they're into, you can tell that they're into that type of scene. Um, but they just crack on with it, as for the bad side of it, um, you only hear, you know, we've got one newspaper that more than likely sensationalises something like that. Um, and round again round here because of that scenario if you do something wrong everybody knows you when you walk down the street and there's no place to hide <laughs> there isn't though no. it's true it's like you know, in my, it, it's like in my job um, you know if I sell something cheap to one person then I get five people in saying how come I didn't get it at that price because everybody knows everybody, there's still that side of it around here. Um, but, you know, there is that side. The Barrow doesn't have a lot, the bowling alley's shut. Um, you've got your basics, you've got a bit of bingo, there isn't a lot to do for people. So, turning to that side, if they can't get a job, and also if, you know, the yard, Vickers, did get rid of it heck of a lot of people, thousands of people in one swoop. So people talk about the mines, um, the fishing industry, you know, these industries that were gotten rid of, you know, and they turned into deprived areas. Well, Vickers got rid of, sh nearly shut the town down. You know, fortunately it's booming again now, but Barrow has a lot of contractors coming in to fill those gaps. Um, but if you're out of that loop, and um, I forget where I'm going now with it, but if, you, if, you, if you're a person in town where there isn't a lot to do, then drugs and the likes have their, their appeal. And as I say, where I was going was if the parents lost their jobs and didn't get jobs, that, you know, those kids have grown up with that, and that is now starting to become generation after generation after generation where people aren't used to seeing people work in a section. But on the other side, as I say, the yard's booming again, BAE are doing a good job with the submarine. You know, different things, so. It's really oh, yeah, I mean, you know. You, you watch the old footage of the 70s and the way people dressed. It was no different round here. We grew up with the long-haired hippies that, you know, and the punks and the rockers, as I said earlier. Um, there were fights, you know. Um, my brother was attacked by mods because he was a rocker and put in hospital. So the, it was happening then and it still happens now, the fights, you know. Um, so we didn't, you know, it, it's never been like romantically blissful around here. Yes, we've got stunning scenery and the sea and everything, but there's always been something going on. I'm sure the Teddy Boys were fighting somebody back in the 50s around here, so. And nowadays, there's probably just more drugs involved. down to Dunnerholm watching the sunset you know um, Russ having his guitar and us all singing songs um, it's nice to be able to take your children down as babies and very small toddlers um, right by um, the sea the estuary we'd go cockling and stuff but listening to the birds and doing that minute where you had to listen to things uh, listening to the sheep over in Millham talking to the sheep on Dunnerholm and playing that game um, where we had a minute's silence and you had to name as many things that you heard and some of the daft comments that came out from that. You know, there's obviously birds, you know, there's birds, there's sheep, you know, that's basically all you could hear, you know, the occasional aeroplane in the distance perhaps. Um, it's also educational because we didn't just say a bird, we had to pick out which type of bird it was. Uh, little things like that so um, you know they're the nice moments and to allow you 
as children to have that is always a good foundation for life you know to to grow up like that um, growing up in the shops um, again because it was um, a self-contained town really with everything that you needed in it we had a toy shop um, a gents clothing shop and a sports shop so all the fishing gear darts etc air rifles um, were all in that two shops that we owned side by side so and Ted was obviously a big member of the community as was mother a member of the community and they did the Rotary Club and things like that um, the round table so um, the businessmen and people in Dalton all knew each other so we were growing up in that community so um, and yeah I mean people still talk about the rubber shops as they were called or known and Ted been an ex-army boxer used to give people dead arms and dead legs when they walked in so all my friends would come into the shop and he'd just jab them and you know you'd get a dead arm on her a dead leg uh, now that would be yes looked at differently shall we say uh, whereas then everybody your kids used to come into the shop to challenge Ted at get, giving them a dead arm um, so Whereas now, you know, there'd be court cases and all sorts for a shopkeeper giving my son a dead arm, you know, hitting them. Um, so, yeah, lots of stories like that. Um, as I say, fishing. A lot of my friends, you know, how romantic is this? But, you know, girls used to follow us up there and um, certainly one of my friends is still married to a girl that followed us up there. Well, no, she didn't follow us up. A girl followed me and she came with the girl who was following me and then she got going out with Trevor and now they live in Australia ever since so you know true romance, true romance. <laughs> what watching boys fish <laughs> uh, eh? rock and roll <laughs> oh. so yeah hay timing potato picking that was the funniest. Hair timing was hard work and you always came with scratches all over your arms, sunburn, sunburn, sun, we had sun. What? And it wasn't global warming, it was just nice. Um, my project. Um, see that, that's another thing which is strong, you know, the bikes and the bikers um, around here is very strong. You know, when Greg died, there was a bike funeral, all the bikers turned up and this week I've just done that for a friend, rode my bike for his funeral and you know, that you go there and a better group of people you won't meet, you know, um, it's turned, you know, the black leather clad biker used to be classed as the bad guy but they're the guys doing the charity runs now, you know. Um, they're the guys helping people, you know, and they're a good, there's always somebody there for you, so within this area, you know, there are literally hundreds of people that, you know, if I get stuck when I'm um, customising uh, my chopper, then I know who to go and see, and they will come up here and help me, so you know and that's that's people that I don't really know they're just part of the biker community you know I might have just bumped into them once and they will say well I'll come up and show you fantastic still there isn't it that's really cool it's like the it's same as anywhere you've got to look past the headlines yeah there is still strong communities there's still people like that mm. um, and certainly you know Barrow for all its negative press there is some fantastic people and communities down there and what people do you know it's not all negative you know the most working class town in Britain because it's got more working men's clubs and chip shops you know they're there for a reason because people enjoy them and people still use them so 
it's a working town. Everyone works hard. <laughs> and then People who have jobs work hard, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why the tradesmen who came from Vickers can get employed anywhere around the world. Because it's respected trades as well.